My name is Karen, and I play the violin. My name is Drew. I play the cello. And I'm Elizabeth. I play viola. Together, Karen, Drew, and I are a string trio called Presto. We're professional musicians, so when we go to work, we play music. Most of the time, we play our music with the Kennedy Center Opera House Orchestra at the John F. Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., but we also play our music at other places all over DC, all over the country, even all over the world. And we've played for some very important people. But nobody is more important to us than you are because we love to share our music and our instruments with young people just like you. And we have a special way of doing that. We like to tell stories. We have a story for you all about music and about our instruments. The name of our story is The Case of the Vanishing Viola. It begins in the offices of 440 Symphony Street. We are in this office, Suite 440B. We have a magician who's preparing very hard for a very important performance, but he is so distracted by those two next door in Suite 440A. They call themselves the Dynamic Duo, and they practice all the time, and that's so disturbing to him. But little does he realize that they, too, are preparing for a very important performance. Those noisy musicians, they practice all the time, and it's driving me crazy. How am I supposed to concentrate on my own practicing with all that racket going on? I, the great magician, Cello Dini, have a very important magic show tomorrow at 2 o'clock. But I can't give a good performance if I don't practice. Well, they seem to have stopped playing. This is a good time for me to practice some more magic now, just like I'll do it in my show tomorrow. For my next illusion, I will make some magic rise up out of my hat. But first, I'll cover it up with this magical cloth. No, they're playing again. Well, this is some nice quiet music. This might actually help me make the magic rise out of my hat.
oh, Karen, I really like that piece. And I think it's going to be the perfect music to start our big concert tomorrow, don't you? Yes, and it has to be good because our fans expect no less from us, for we are the dynamic, dynamic duo. duo. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> even the dynamic duo has to rehearse if we want to do a good job. Would it be okay if we rehearse the Mozart now? Oh, of course. Karen? 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 I don't know. It feels a little bit slow to me. Do you think the tempo really should be as slow as that? Tempo. I heard them say the word tempo. I wonder what tempo means. Okay, let's try a faster tempo. Okay. Okay, whoa, whoa, okay. Wow. I don't think I can play it as fast as that. Maybe you can, but I am never going to be able to keep up with that. Oh, okay. I wonder, could we try a tempo that's a little more in between? Okay. Much better tempo. I like that tempo. Okay. Now I think I understand. Tempo must be a musical word that means how fast or slow the music goes. It's the speed of the music. You know, Elizabeth, can we try one more place? And it's near the end. It's a measure, measure 34. 32, 33, 34. Oh, right. Isn't that the spot where we were practicing the dynamics yesterday? Yes. yes. Dynamics. Now there's another interesting word. I wonder what dynamics means. Elizabeth, that is such a loud dynamic. I like loud dynamics. Oh, can we try it a soft dynamic? Yes, of course. I can tell you're not convinced. Okay. Let's start with a loud dynamic and then a soft dynamic and end with a loud dynamic. That sounds good. I like that. I really like how we can change the dynamics while we play. Good idea. All right. I think I understand. Dynamics must be another special musical word. It means how loud or soft the music is. It's the volume of the music. Now, Karen, I would love it if we could play the whole Mozart and try out those tempo and the dynamics. Okay. Thank you. 
that feels so much better. Good. So now, Elizabeth, I am so hungry. Can we just take a short break to go get a snack? Yeah, I'm kind of hungry, too. Uh, let me just put my viola down. I will be right with you. Okay. Oh, would you remind me one more time? You know how forgetful I am. The big concert tomorrow, it's at 2 o'clock, right? Not 3. 2 o'clock tomorrow. 2 o'clock tomorrow. 2 o'clock tomorrow? They just said that their big concert's at 2 o'clock tomorrow, but that's the same time as my big magic show. This was going to be my biggest audience ever, my big break, but people are not going to come to see my show when they can hear the dynamic duo and hear their beautiful music. I've got to think of a way to get their concert canceled so everybody will come to see my show instead. I've got an idea. I'll take one of their instruments. They can't play a concert without their instrument. I'll just keep it till my performance is over and then I'll give it right back. All right, now what? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, Karen, you are so funny. Wow. Oh. I needed that snack. Wow, Thank yeah, you. I feel so refreshed and ready to get back to work. Yes. I'll just get my viol and I'll be right. Hmm. Thought I left the case open. Whatever. Uh, um, Karen? Yeah? Karen? What? Karen, where's my viola? <gasps> it's, it's not Where? there. Where's my viola? It's not there. Uh, Karen, oh. where's my viola? What are we going to do? The concert, the where's my viola? You always leave it there. The concert is tomorrow. What are we going to do? Oh, no. I can't play without a viola. This is terrible, Elizabeth. It looks like your viola has vanished. Vanished? You don't think it's been stolen, do you? Oh, no. No, what are we gonna do? Okay, Karen? okay, we've got to do something. Um, um, do? We've, um, uh, I don't know. We have to get a detective. A detective? A detective? If they hire a detective, they'll find out that I have the viola. Wait, I've got an idea. I'll disguise myself as a detective and get them to hire me. Then I can keep them from finding out what really happened to the viola. Oh, Karen, maybe you're right. Maybe we do need a detective, but where are we going to find a detective? I don't know any detectives. Do you know any detectives? Oh, no, I don't, but just wait a minute. Just wait here. I'll go find okay. one. <sighs> Elizabeth, there's a detective's office next door. I thought that was a magician's office. It's a detective's office now, so come. Okay. The door's open. All right. Is anybody here? I don't see anybody. Hello. Oh. Oh, oh, my. Good afternoon and welcome to the offices of Dini Cello. I'm the world's greatest detective. I specialize in <gasps> making things appear. Wow. I wish you could make my viola appear like that. It's vanished and we think it's been stolen and the big concert is tomorrow. Oh, vanished, you say? How terribly disturbing. Yes. But vanished violas are notoriously difficult to recover. Oh, please don't say that. I suggest you cancel this concert. <gasps> cancel the concert? We can't do that. That would disappoint our fans. Don't you know that we're the, the dynamic, dynamic duo? duo. <laughs> yes, I've heard. But nevertheless, I suggest you cancel this concert. No, we're not going to do that. Karen, let's see if we can find some other detective. Oh, oh another detective? No. Oh, you're not going to need to do that. See uh, how it's so important. I will take the case. Oh, good. Oh, thank goodness. I'll need to start with a full description of the stolen item. Okay, but what is there to tell you? It's a viola. Everybody knows what a viola is, don't they? Well, no. <gasps> oh. Okay, well, a viola, it's a lot like a violin, but it's a little bit bigger. Well, what if I don't know how big a violin is? How could I compare? 
Wait here, I'll go get my violin, and then you can see how big it is. I'm exhausted. May I have a glass of water, please? Oh, why, certainly. Here, have a seat right here. After all, the perfect host always provides refreshments for his guests. There you go. Oh, thank you. Okay. So, this. This is a violin. Uh Uh-huh. Well, now I can see how big the violin is. But what is this? It's a bow. You need a bow to play the violin and the viola. It's a long wooden stick with hair from the horse's tail that stretched from one end to the other. And when you have a bow, you can play all kinds of music. But if you don't have a bow, you can still make a sound. You just have to use your fingers and pluck the strings, and that is called pizzicato. 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 Yeah, but if you have a bow, you can play all kinds of music, like, let's see, oh, like this. Fiddle music. Yeah, Fiddle. look here. Fiddle. I am a very respected magician detective. Oh, I know the difference between a violin and a fiddle. It's a violin. But there isn't any difference between the violin and a fiddle. It's the same instrument, just playing different styles of music, that's all. Different styles of music? What do you mean by that? Oh, Elizabeth, let's show him what we mean, like the way we do it in our dynamic duo performances. That's a great idea. It's easy. We all know the violin can play lots of kinds of music. Some of it written hundreds of years ago, some of it written yesterday. So let's imagine for a moment that we are in the court of a king. We're in the king's court and it's 200 years ago. Our court violinist is getting ready to play some classical dance music, a minuet. And when the violinist is done playing, all the people in the court cheer and they say, bravo, bravo. Everybody says bravo. Bravo, bravo. So that's one kind of music the violin can play, classical music. But there are lots of other kinds too. So let's leave the king's court and let's head to New York City to a cool jazz club where all the people in the club are waiting to hear our violinist play some cool jazz on her violin. And when she plays, everyone snaps or taps along. Everyone. And when she's done playing, everyone says, yeah, man, cool. Let's try it. Yeah, Yeah, man, man. cool. Cool. So we're going to show you one last kind of music. This time, we are headed to a country music dance hall where everyone is wearing a cowboy hat and cowboy boots. And here is our fiddle player. She's going to play us a lively bluegrass fiddle tune on her violin.
John Lynch is done playing, everyone says, yee-haw. Try it. Yee-haw. Would you like to try it again? <laughs> yee-haw. <laughs> Fabulous. So now you see, if we play jazz or classical music on this instrument, we call it a violin. But if you play country bluegrass music on the very same instrument, then you can call it a fiddle. It's the same instrument, different styles of music. So now do you get it? Well, I suppose that I do. In that case, could we please get back to looking for my viola? It looks just like Karen's violin, but it's bigger and it plays lower notes. Oh, bigger you say? Yes, it's a little bit bigger. And it plays lower notes? Yes, a little bit lower. Well, in that case, the viola What's must look something <gasps> like this. He has a cello. <clears throat> He's good. Oh, oh, thank you. So, since you have your violin here, maybe we could play a duet together. Okay. How about a minuet by Johann Sebastian Bach? It's a lot of fun. Uh, excuse hey. me, but why are you playing duets? We're supposed to be looking for my viola. Uh, well, you said that the viola is a little bigger than a violin. Yes. And it plays lower notes. Yes. Well, look what I've got here. You're all uh, set. Okay, no, this is a cello. A cello is much bigger than a violin and plays much lower. Besides, how am I supposed to put this under my chin when I play? Hey, what what is that in oh. the... Box oh, that looks there's, uh, like, that this looks is, suspicious. Uh, there's, there's, there's nothing. It's, it's just an empty box. See? Okay, what's that in your hand? Uh, there's nothing in my hand. Uh, what's in your other hand? Uh, there's nothing in my other hand. Okay, what is under that cloth? The cloth. Oh, it's a tablecloth. I have a, a table there. Not that cloth. What is under that purple cloth right there in your hand? Oh, oh this, this purple cloth. Well, this is actually, this is just an empty cloth. There's nothing there. Uh, I think we are wasting time. We should go to the scene of the crime and look for evidence. Okay. About time. Follow me. We were here in our office. We were preparing for a very wonderful concert. We just took a short break for a snack, and when we came back, the viola had vanished. Uh, I see. Well, you're going to need to play some music on your violin while I look for clues. What? Why? Well, I always listen to music while I work. Oh. And what would you like to hear? My favorite tune, Pop Goes the Weasel. All right. Aha! I found a clue. Aha! I found another clue. Aha! I believe that I now have all the evidence I need. I am ready to solve the crime. First, I found a piece of red cloth torn from a large red suit worn by the perpetrator who is clearly quite fat. Next, I found some white beard hair. I believe I detect cookie crumbs and milk stains on this beard hair. Clearly, we are looking for a fat man who wears a red suit and has a long white beard. He was the thief. A fat man. 
in a red suit with a fat man in a red suit with a white beard. Are you accusing Santa Claus of stealing the viola? You are of no help at all because you're nuts. Okay, we all Santa. know Santa Claus did not steal my viola. But Karen, if it wasn't Santa, then who did take my viola? Do you know, I have an idea. I think it was you. You took the viola. You're not a detective. You're the magician next door. Oh, all right. Oh. You're, you're on to me. I did take the viola. I, I didn't really steal it. I was planning to give it right back. Well, that doesn't make any sense because if you were going to bring it right back, then why did you take it in the first place? Well, it's because you two play so beautifully. That's why. Well, that makes even less sense. You took it because we play beautifully? Well, you see, you have a big performance at 2 o'clock tomorrow, right? Yes. That's the same time as my big magic show. This was going to be my big break, the show that made me famous. But I could see people weren't going to come to my show when they could hear the dynamic duo and hear your beautiful music. Oh. I thought if I took your instrument, you'd cancel the concert. Oh, it was so wrong. I never should have done that. I I'm going to go bring your viola back right now. Why you two call the police? You know, we really should call the police because you should never take someone else's property. But, Elizabeth, I kind of feel sorry for him. Oh, I guess I sort of feel sorry for him, too. He wasn't really so bad because he was going to bring my viola back. Yeah. He was just worried about his own performance. And I can understand that. I, I understand that, too, but... Not everyone would have come to our performance. Some people would have gone to his and some would have come to ours, but it, it's too bad they can't do both though. Wait a minute, I think you're onto something. In fact, it's brilliant. What? People can go to both performances if we combine them. We can play music while he does magic. Oh, <gasps> oh there's my viola. <gasps> oh. oh, my poor viola. Will you check it and make oh, sure he goodness. took good care of it? I certainly hope you took good care of it. Let me see. Mr. Magician, we have a proposal for you. I know. I'm going to jail. Nope. How would you like to go to the concert hall instead? What? That's right. You can join our group. And when Karen and I play duets, two people playing music together, you can do magic. And we can also be a trio, three people playing music together since you play the cello. Well, that would be great. Do you think we could play some music together right now? Oh, that, yeah, that would be wonderful. You know what? We could play a string trio by Beethoven. Was fun. So now, can Elizabeth and I play duets while you do some magic? Oh, well, that would be really fun. Hmm. 
Let me think about what kind of magic I could do. I know, no, no. Can you do that trick where you pull a rabbit out of a hat? Uh, well, maybe. I, I do have my hat here, and it... Well, I wanted to see. Okay. Is it empty? No, nope, looks empty. It's empty. Okay. All right. Well, now that you've seen inside the hat, in a moment, I will attempt to reach in and pull out a white rabbit. But I'm going to do it with my magic wand and the help of my new musical friends. So, take it away. Now that the musicians and the magician have decided to cooperate instead of competing, I think everything is going to go much better for them. And that means our story is done. Now please enjoy one last piece of music while we review the special music words we used in the program. <laughs> 